Welcome to our review on energy transfer by conduction. So the first thing we really need to know here are the definitions of two keywords that we're going to use through this. First one is a conductor, which is a substance that allows heat or electricity to be transmitted. And the second is insulator, which is a substance that does not allow heat or electricity to be transmitted. So one way you could have actually carried out an experiment in class to investigate this is shown in the diagram there. So what you would have had were a range of different material rods and you'd have stuck a drawing pin or a paper clip onto the end with a bit of Vaseline. You then heat the opposite end of the rod with a Bunsen burner and time how long it takes for the pin to fall off. With the rod that falls off first being the best conductor and the one that falls off last being the best insulator. One of the important things that we need to understand to do with this energy transfer by conduction is something called the thermal conductivity. Now, when we're talking about the thermal conductivity of a sample, then we're looking at how much energy is being transferred each second by conduction. And in the table at the bottom there, I've given you a range of different common household materials and their relative thermal conductivities on the right. And what you actually find is that the lower the value of that relative thermal conductivity, the better that substance is at insulating. So the best one in that table there is aerogel. So what we actually find is that those materials that have low thermal conductivities are the good or the best insulators. Now, when we're considering what's actually going to affect the energy transfer per second through an insulating material, there are three things that we need to consider. The first is the thermal conductivity of the material. The second is the thickness of the material. And the third is the temperature difference across it. If we now consider what this actually looks like in terms of a graph, then what I've given you here are the two different walls, if you like, of our house. So on the left, the blue wall there, that one has a high thermal conductivity and the red wall on the right has a low thermal conductivity. Everything else is the same. They're the same thickness and the temperature difference between the inside and the outside are the same. If you look at the graph underneath, you can see that the red line decreases more steadily. The blue line has a rapid decrease. So our red line is the low thermal conductivity. It takes longer for that energy from inside to be transferred to outside than the blue line, which is the high thermal conductivity, where it's going to happen much faster. In this example, we can see the difference between the thin and the thick walls. So what we see in the graph at the bottom there is that the thick wall has a much more gradual decrease in temperature than the thin wall, where it's much more rapid. So again, it's just showing us that the thicker the wall is, then the more gradual that transfer of energy from inside to outside will be. So what that information actually tells us then is that the best insulation we could use is going to be as thick as practically possible and have the lowest thermal conductivity as possible. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can explain what thermal conductivity is. You can define the term insulator and conductor and explain what materials make good insulators and why.